welcome back to Elements of Poetry. My name is Kara Roseborough, and I'm excited to get started with you this week on a new topic. But before we do, let's revisit Tonka from last week. If you remember, Tonka is an old classical form of poetry originating in Japan that consists of seven lines that are five syllables, then seven, five, seven, and seven. One of our viewers, Katie Steele, has a great contribution that we'd like to share today. Let's take a look. The Musician. Night in the rail yard, a boy sings and stones clatter against the freight car. For the boy who lost his words, the world is an instrument. Memorial. White cars weave between, the hills, passengers unknown. The town sleeps below, dreaming their goodbyes. The sky ruptures, the rain never stops. Fantastic work. In the first poem, The Musician, I want to draw attention to the line that reads, a boy sings in stones. So here the subject of the poem has lost his words. We don't know if this is a, a physical loss like they're actually not able to speak, or if due to trauma they have kind of coiled into themselves and mentally are not able to bring themselves to speak. Either way, with that inability, instead of being hindered by that, this person is making new music using, as the last line says, the world as an instrument. But I want to say that singing in stones, rather than anything else, the fact that that's that material, it brings a heaviness and a weightedness to it versus something like a pebble or a, a feather or something like that. So we get this really beautiful image of singing, but then paired with something a little darker and a little heavier. Same thing in Memorial. We have this really tranquil image of a town that's sleeping, white cars weaving in between hills, but then we have a sky that ruptures and this nonstop rain. The environment seems to be indicating to what the title is indicating to a memorial so something that is sad or mournful or nostalgic versus everything else which is a little more at peace it's a great contrast really beautiful imagery in both of these poems and of course they also follow the tonka structure of five seven five seven seven thank you so much katie for contributing most but not all of lyrical poetry relies on a regular type of meter that's based on the number of syllables or the stresses within each line. Some popular forms of meter include iambic, trochaic, anapestic, pyrrhic, dactylic, and spondaic. Aside from its popularity in ancient Greece, lyric poetry was also popular in ancient Rome, China, and Persia. In the 17th century, it was one of the dominant forms of poetry in the Western world, made famous by such writers as John Donne, Andrew Marvel, and John Milton, who wrote Paradise Lost. In the 18th century, it declined in popularity, but was still somewhat relevant with writers such as Oliver Goldsmith and Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. In the 19th century, lyric poetry regained its popularity the lyric became synonymous with poetry itself. There was a rise in romantic lyric poetry, which consisted of first-person accounts of thoughts or feelings of a specific moment. These were often considered extreme, but very personal. The sonnet, a particular kind of lyric, became popular once again in places like Britain with William Wordsworth and in Russia with Alexander Pushkin. In the early 20th century, Lyric poetry was the dominant form of poetry in the United States, Europe, and the British colonies. It was also challenged by the modernist movement with poets like Ezra Pound, T.S. Eliot, and William Carlos Williams. After dying down for a bit, it reemerged after World War II, signifying, in a way, a return to a certain kind of classicism. Lyric poetry that talked about relationships, and personal domestic life soon became part of the mainstream, especially thanks to confessionalist poets like Sylvia Plath and Anne Sexton. For modern poets today, poets aren't necessarily writing, maintaining all of these rules from ancient Greece, but rather using elements of that 
to create lyric poetry that's often mixed in with other styles of poetry, uh, mostly free verse. So they're not necessarily adhering to a certain meter, but taking those elements and making it their own. Today, we're going to look at the work of Rita Dove, who does just that in her poem, American Smooth. We were dancing. It must have been a foxtrot or a waltz, something romantic but requiring restraint, rise and fall precise. Execution as we moved into the next song without stopping, two chests heaving, above a seven league stride. Such perfect agony, one learns to smile through. Ecstatic mimicry, being the sine qua non of American smooth. And because I was distracted by the effort of keeping my frame, the leftward lean head turned just enough to gaze out past your ears and always smiling, smiling. I didn't notice how still you'd become until we had done it for two measures, four, achieved flight that swift and serene magnificence before the earth remembered who we were and brought us down. As you can see with this poem, Rita Dove is focusing on a very specific moment, this very specific four measures or eight measures of a dance between two people. And we're getting so many details that make this moment, this very small moment, so much bigger, making it more extreme, if you will. It's written in first person, like most lyrics. And we have here someone speaking very passionately about this moment. We also get this somewhat fantastical, possibly metaphorical moment where the two people in their dancing are flying. They're taken away by what they're doing. And whether that is literally flying in some kind of magical moment or metaphorically speaking, taking away uh, by this moment, they are then brought down to earth by reality. And so we have this really beautiful, romantic, blown up moment focusing on that and then that moment is gone and we return. I would now like to turn it over to you, our viewers. Your challenge for this week is to write your own lyric poem. 10 lines or less, please submit it by this Sunday, May 3rd by noon. You can send your work to fjtheater at cityofevanston.org. Please note that by submitting your work, you grant Fleetwood Dread and Theater the right to review and share your submission in our videos and on our social media platforms for the Stay Creative series. We would love to hear from you. This is a chance to really just write from the heart. Again, 10 lines or less, submit it by this Sunday, May 3rd by noon to fjtheater at cityofevanston.org. All right, get to writing and I will see you on Thursday where we will talk more about Rita Dove. Until then, stay safe and stay creative. Bye.